Christian church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prison. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Old Brooklyn Christian Church. Today's message is called, You Are the Salt of the Earth. Oh, well, Lord, um, I'm busy. <laughs> Check with me next week and I'll see. Nobody wants to do that. But how many know God calls us to do things that we don't want to do? Right. Amen. 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 I do. I, first of all, I love everyone here. I love you guys. I'm thankful. I like to <laughs> preach. Right? I'm, God called me to preach. I enjoy preaching. I believe God called me and gifted to me. But I never wanted to pastor. Yes. Amen. There's so many things that come with it that I didn't want. I didn't want the responsibility. Let me say this. My flesh didn't want the responsibility. It didn't want the commitment. It didn't want it. But how many know by me doing this, it could be keeping me out of prison. It could be keeping me from destroying society. Right. Amen. God knows what we need to be doing in order to be preserved. Amen. Amen. God knows how to preserve you, and you can't preserve other people if you're not preserved yourself. Amen. 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 How many know that salt comes from the ocean? Yeah. Someone said, well, just sea salt, Mr. Smarty Pants. <laughs> well, actually, I did a research, and all salt comes from the ocean. <laughs> it is true, Mr. Smarty Pants. It's true. All salt comes from the ocean. Now, Mr. Morton, Mor Mor it comes from the ocean one way, shape, or form. But there is sea level. If it goes below sea level, it could be mined out, and they blow it up with dynamite. How many know you're eating dynamite with some of your salts? Sign me up for that one. The Bible says, with much knowledge comes much sorrow. Yeah, I could tell you more. God called us to comfort those hurting and spiritually thirsty. Yes, Lord, let me do that one. I'll do that. <laughs> See, we all want to do one thing, but not the other. How many know you might not be called to warn people? That's right. See, every person in the body of Christ has a different calling. That's right. Amen. God told Hosea to do these things. And God called us to comfort those hurting and spiritually thirsty. Amen. God called us to comfort those hurting and spiritually thirsty. In Matthew 25, verses 42, it says, For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as you have done it not to one of the least of these, you have done it not to me. Amen. Jesus is saying, if you go out and you speak to those in prison and you visit those in prison, you're doing it directly to me. Right. Amen. Amen. Because God has called us to be the salt of the earth. How many know salt has a proper place Amen. and it has a place where it's supposed to be, where it's going to be effective. Yeah. Amen. There are people that are hurting in this world. There are people that are hurting. They're sad. They're lonely and they're in nursing homes. They don't have no one coming to visit them. There are people who have been abused since childhood. They've been abandoned. They've been in divorce homes, drug homes, and they've committed crimes and they are locked up in jail and they're tired. Amen. And they're ready for something to quench their thirst. And that's why we are the salt of the earth. We are to go to these places that God called us to do and share the love of God with them. Not to beat them down. Amen. Amen. But to share the love of God with them. Amen. There was a time where I had a, a, a restaurant that used to be my favorite restaurant. It was in Chinatown. And I got sweet and sour chicken with fried rice. And a half an hour later, I felt different. An hour later, I felt all of my energy drain from me. Every minute after an hour later, I got sicker and sicker and sicker until finally I felt like I was going to faint. And then I was at home, I was throwing up. And it was just constantly nonstop throwing up. And I realized that I had food poison. 
And then I got so dehydrated that I felt like I was going to die. Because all the, the vomiting, all the throwing up, all the, the water coming out of me, everything, my body was trying to reject this poison inside of me. And I was drinking milk, water, Gatorade, bread. I was doing everything I could to try to hydrate myself and nothing was working. How many know salt, when applied to water, becomes saline solution? And when you're dehydrated and you have food poison, when you go to the hospital and they hook up the IV to you, they apply something as simple as water and salt. It's called saline solution. And they hooked me up to that IV with food poison and immediately immediately after all that agony that I was going through, I'm talking about instantly, as soon as they pricked that needle in me and put the saline solution, I immediately felt refreshed. I felt that salt water going throughout my whole body and I felt a million, I was, as soon as they hooked me up, I was like ready to unhook up the IV and walk out of the hospital. I felt so much better. See, that is what we are to be. We are to be saline solution to those who are thirsty, those who have a void in their heart, those who are not satisfied by the world and the devil, the things that he's offering. Amen. We are to be saline solution. Amen. 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 And John 4, 13, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, unto her, whosoever drinketh this water shall thirst again. Right? That's the devil's water. That's the world's water. Mm -hmm. If you drink it, you'll be thirsty again. But Jesus said, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. This is what Jesus provides to us. He gives us eternal salvation. That when we die, we'll be in heaven forever yep. and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. 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 How many of you know that saline solution, they use it to pour on wounds? When someone is cut, and they have an infection or they have dirt, they'll pour saline solution. This is what medical experts will choose to use to clean out the wounds. Why? Because it helps speed up the healing process. The saline solution, the mixture of the water and the salt together, it speeds up the healing process. And the medical professionals choose it because when they pour it on the wounds, it doesn't sting. It doesn't hurt them. It doesn't cause more pain to their already misery. How many know God gives us wisdom on how to not hurt people? Amen. When they're already suffering. Mm -hmm. Amen. Too much salt poured on a wound will sting. It has to be diluted down with water in order for it to be the right application. How many know God knows how to give us the right amount of word for the right situation? Amen. Where it is not hurting the person, but it's actually helping the person, and it's speeding up their healing process. Amen. How many know that's what the word of God does to our souls? Amen. That's what it does to our mind. That's what it does to our heart. A lot of folks out there, they're hurting. Some of you in here are hurting. And the word of God is refreshing you. It's restoring you. It's healing you. It's springing up a well of everlasting life inside of you. Amen. I remember there was a time where I was hurting so much when I was in prison. And I'll tell you what, you could have given me any type of medication from the psychologist. In fact, I tried that and it still didn't comfort me. The greatest psychologist with the greatest medication that the world had to do to give me still didn't help me. Counseling didn't help me. Education didn't help me. Family and friends didn't help me. See, there is a pain in this life that's so deep and so great that only God, can resolve it. Amen. Only God can help it. Yes. Amen. 
God called us to help and keep others from slipping. God called us to help keep others from slipping. How many know that if you throw rock salt on the ground, it melts the salt and it stops people from slipping? How many know that God called us to help people, to stabilize them, to keep them from slipping? Not to go behind them and push them or to trip them, but to help them to stand. In Luke twenty-two thirty-two. It says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. We are called to strengthen one another. Amen. Amen. To encourage one another when they're doing the right thing. When they're active and effective out in the world, being the salt of the earth, doing ministry and preaching the word of God. We are to strengthen one another. When people are tempted and they're overtaken by a sin, we are to strengthen them back in the word. That's right, man. Amen. We are to encourage them to get out of sin. Mm-hmm. See, there have been people that have been coming to this church. They were struggling with all kinds of things. And they came to me in private and in secret, and they shared, which was really hard to do. They shared with me the things that they were struggling. And this to this day, no one can come up here and say, well, Pastor Joseph shared to everyone, and they gossip about the thing that I share with them. No, I didn't tell anyone. But I prayed for them. I gave them wisdom and certain things to do that would help them to overcome that thing that they were struggling with so that they can not fall, they could not slip, they could not go into the consequences that would wipe them out and destroy them. Most people don't use a pastor for what the God called the pastor to do. Right. God called the pastors to watch over the sheep. But a lot of sheep don't want to be watched over. they want to run freely and dance with the wolves but I said it before I'm here to make wolf sandwiches to put them on the grill and apply rub to them and to marinate them and make wolf sandwiches Amen? amen salt them And to salt them. (laughs) In Galatians 6, 1, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, beat them down to the ground until they cry for mercy. No, it doesn't say that. It says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, laugh at them and shame them so they never come back to church. No, it don't say that either. Brethren, let's try it the third time. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Amen. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Because if you're judging someone for something that you're not struggling with, it won't be long before you're struggling with the same thing that you judge. Because God said what measure you judge out will be measured back to you. And if you're attacking and condemning people for a certain sin, it can come back to you. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about warning people to repent and get out of it. I'm talking about believers that are struggling and that want to be free. It says, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, do you have to have a title as a pastor in order to keep people from slipping? No. All you have to have is the salt of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. The salt of the Spirit. That's all you need. And love in your heart. And you will be fully equipped and qualified to be effective Mm -hmm. to keep people from slipping. Amen. Amen. But you don't want to be slipping yourself Amen. when you're trying to help someone else from slipping. There was a time where my pastor, he was out, and my pastor, he died, but he was a big, big man. He was like six foot three, 
maybe 300 pounds. He was a big boy. And I remember there was black ice right on Henninger Apartments where Brother Larry lives. And I remember it was so slippery. And I remember as soon as I got out of the car, I started to slip a little bit. Well, my pastor, he just got out of the car real quick and he went down to the ground and I tried to help him, but he was so big, he pulled me down to the ground and we were both getting, and then he tried to get up and then he tried to help me up and then I pulled him back down to the ground. We looked like bumbling fools, but we still made it to church. Amen. <laughs> and I always wonder if anyone saw that. But I think that's what people look like that are struggling with the same thing, trying to help someone else struggle with the same thing. First, we have to be delivered ourselves so that we can help other be delivered. Amen. Amen. He called us to help and heal others through Christ. Amen. 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 Help and heal others through Christ. Again, that's what I talked about with the saline solution. Amen. It helps to speed up the healing process when poured into wounds. Amen. And Luke 10.30, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves, which stripped him his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Amen? Amen. Amen? This is the story of the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. Most people who don't even believe in God use the word or the phrase Good Samaritan. And a lot of times they don't even know where it came from. It came from the Bible. Amen. Amen. I, I love it when the world who doesn't know God uses biblical sayings and they don't know the application of where it came from. It came from the Bible. That's how powerful it is. Amen. God's word is spreading without people even knowing it's his word. <laughs> That's right. I hate the Bible and I don't love Jesus. I'll never go to church. But you're quoting the Bible more than I am. All well, Everything you're saying is coming from the Bible. <laughs> and Jesus answered, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him and of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Amen. This happens all the time. Everywhere. In Luke 10, 33, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And we, when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And when he went to him, he bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. So this good Samaritan, he wasn't a religious Jewish person from the tribe of Judah. Judah. He wasn't an uh, Israelite. He wasn't of someone that was supposed to be of a high prestige or reputation. He was actually the opposite. Someone that they esteemed as heathens who didn't know God. But in spite of that, he represented the salt of the earth. He saw a man that was hurting. They, he saw a man that was abandoned. He went there and he helped him. I've seen videos of people in China that run over a baby and people leave the baby there and no one helps them up. That's an abomination. Yes. Yes, I do. There was a time where I was at work and I heard what I thought was firecrackers. And I even said that there's firecrackers outside. I said, that's not a gun. It sounds just like a firecracker. It's not loud enough to be a gun. And then Deacon Glenn said, I, I saw someone fall over. And I put two and two together. I heard firecrackers and someone fell over. I'm like, that wasn't firecrackers. Someone got shot. Mm -hmm. And I looked out the window and I saw someone, he got shot. Uh, the whole clip was unloaded on him. Every bullet connected with him. And before that, the guy was pistol whipping him. And before that, they were fighting in the library right across the street. And I remember running across uh, to the street and I was looking where anyone was going to help this guy. And nobody helped him. Everyone was scared and afraid, which they should have been. No one at the library, all the workers. I went in the library. I'm like, I'm like, do you have a blanket? And they're like, oh, we're closed right now. Someone got shot. I'm like, that's why I'm here. <laughs> do you have a blanket? Anything that we can stop this guy from bleeding so he doesn't die. And nobody helps him. His friends, his girlfriend, everyone, they abandon him. They run away. They leave the guy like a dog to bleed in the street, right across the street from here. And I ran it back into the optical. I said, Rhonda, I said, do we have a blanket, anything? And we happened to have a blanket in the back. I ran out there and I wrapped the guy up with the blanket to stop the bleeding. 
It is nothing special. But at one point in time, if I ever felt like a real pastor, it was that time there. Amen. Amen. And the guy lived. Praise God. Thank you. And then Deacon had connections at Metro Hospital. He was able to get the man's identification and where he was at. I went up to the hospital and I prayed for him. His girlfriend was up there and she said, and I asked them, can I pray for him? Would you like me to pray for him? And she said, please do. And I laid hands for him and I prayed him. He, had, he was just a wreck. That's what we're called to do. We are called to make a difference. Amen. Now you have a choice. When you see something like that, you can be a coward and you can be afraid. I'll tell you what, if I, were to, if I died trying to help someone else, then that's the best way to die. Amen. Amen. We're not going to live forever no matter what anyways. And God presents situations like that as opportunities for us to be the salt of the earth or opportunities for us to lose our savor. Amen. That's right. But it's your choice what you're going to do. Amen. But if you already had your mind set up, how many of you know that God allowed me to see that? Yes. And I'm not saying that I spared his life. God spared his life. Amen. But God let other people be there that would help him. Yes. In Luke 10, 37, it says, he said, that, he said, he that showed mercy on him, then he said, Jesus, unto him, go and do thou likewise. Amen? Amen. Jesus is teaching us how to be the salt of the earth. Amen. Amen. And I don't have much longer to go. I'm almost done, folks. <laughs> We are called to live a balanced life. Amen. Amen? How many know if you put too much salt on something, you will ruin it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen, Sister Fran? Yeah. You can't just cook stuff and just, uh, you know, the cap, oops, the cap fell off. Oh, it'll be good and dust the salt off. No, that salt is in that food and it's ruined. I've done that before. I was sawing something happy with the salt shaker and then the cap fell off and boom. It's over. Right? How many know too much church, too much word, too much? It could be an overabundance where you could preach, you could have a three, four hour long service, but that don't mean people are listening for three, four hours long. Their mind had shut off an hour ago and you're talking to yourself and to the walls and the chairs, but nobody's listening. Amen. I'm up here with a microphone not to make myself feel good. I can tell when people shut down. Amen. I can tell. And I have money in my wallet, right? <laughs> I'm not just going to hand my one money out to someone who doesn't want it. Right. I'm not going to throw my money out in the street to someone who doesn't see the value in it. It's the same way with the Word of God. I value it so much Amen. that I'm not going to waste it. Amen? Amen. I'm going to save it where there's a need for it. Amen. And it doesn't matter whether I'm in this church, the jail, the nursing home. I tell the folks in the jail, look, love you guys. If you don't want church, you don't want to come. There's another floor that's praying for me to do church down over there. And I've done that before. There was a time I stood up there and nobody came, wiped the dust off my feet, went to the next floor. And they said they were praying that I came there and did a church service. Amen. Amen. Believe me, you don't have to force your belief. You don't have to cast pearls before swine, give to the dogs what is holy. There is people that are hungry, thirsty, and desperate, and they want to hear what God has given you. Amen. Amen. And save it for them. Amen. We are called to live a balanced life. How many of you know not enough salt is, is bad too? You ever eat french fries with no salt? You ever have potato chips with no salt? It's horrible. I mean, it's like it, it don't even deserve the right to be called a potato chip without salt. Right? It's like it's, they should call it a non-potato chip. <laughs> or a fake potato chip. A potato chip needs salt, right? You ever have so much salt that now you want something sweet, yeah. right? Because you want a balance. How many know in God there is a balance in God? Amen. But I learned this. The more someone's hurting, the more desperate someone is, the more word they want. Amen. Right. 
When everything's going good and your life seems like peaches, rainbows, and butterflies, oh, you just take a little bit of salt, just a little bit of word. But when things are going hard, you don't want to, I can't kick you out of the church. You don't want to leave, <laughs> right? Because you need more of it. So different people, depending on what's going on in their life, require different amounts. Amen. Amen. The more food there is, the more salt you need to apply to it. The greater the problem, the greater the word that needs to be salt. for that problem. Salt. Amen. Amen. If you have a little bit of food, you don't need a lot of salt. Amen. In Proverbs 25, 16, and I am almost done, folks. <laughs> Hast thou found honey? It is so much su as sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomited. Right? How many know bees love honey? How many know that if you take a whole gallon of honey and dump it on a bee, how many know that bee don't like that much honey? Because you will kill it. Amen. It's too much honey. Amen. They work their whole life Producing. working for honey. Yep. Yes. But not that much honey. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Too much of anything will destroy you. Yes. We are to live balanced lives. Amen? Amen? Enough church, and, and we don't have church all week long, folks. It's like an hour long, you know, oh, if I could make it, an hour. And then we spend a hundred hours watching TV and a thousand hours eating, <laughs> right? We could afford an hour of church, amen? amen? But there should be a balance. There should be a balance of God, a balance of marriage, a balance of family, a balance of job, a balance of, you know, cleaning the house. There should be a balance, amen? That's right. We are called to bring out the best in others. Amen. Jesus said you are the salt of the earth. You are called to bring out the best in others. Husbands, you should bring out the best in your wife. Wives, you should bring out the best in your husband. Amen. Don't nag the person to the, so that they wish they were dead. Amen. That's not bringing out the best. Amen. There's a scripture some of you may or may not know. It said it's better for a man to live in a corner of a housetop than in a wide house with a brawling woman. And I can picture a poor old man just vexed to wanting to die on the corner of his little rooftop right here. Work with me, cameraman. Amen. On the corner of the rooftop right here. Just, just happy that there's peace on that little corner. Amen. We are called to bring out the best in others. Amen. And that's what salt does. It brings out the flavor of food. And I was watching these gourmet cooks where they're starting to make their own salt. They don't want their salt blown up with dynamite and gunpowder mixed in it. They, they're making organic salt. They're going to the ocean and grab a, a, a jar of it and they'll boil it until that water evaporates and they'll grind that salt down and they'll use it on their food. It's fresh, free from God. <laughs> All they have to do is apply fire to it to bring out the salt. Amen. That's why it says, let your, 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 your speech be seasoned with salt. And it said, be salted with fire because fire is applied to water and it brings out the salt. Amen. And we need fire in our lives, tribulation, trials, and challenges, hardships in our life. It brings out the salt Old in Brooklyn us. Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to pray. Good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed. Old Brooklyn Christian Church. <laughs>